Hi everybody, it's Martin at Flicking Fellas again today and I'm tying a bass gimp for you. It's just a wee fly that I've come up with. Not really rocket science, but it works, works for but I work for smallies, I work for largemouths. I work for other species as well. Um, the hook I'm using is a TMCO TMC 200R size 6, but you could use 4s, 8s, 10s if you really wanted to tie it small. Size 6 is a sort of decent middle ground. So, thread is just 6 hot black thread. This is Danville's, use whatever you like, doesn't matter. I'm going to run my thread and it's just about in line with where the barb would have been. Take it back towards the eye of the hook so I can tie in my dumbbell eyes. I've just painted them blue, I'm tying a black and blue version of the fly. Um, obviously. It's up to you, you know, you can just use the plain eyes or the pre-painted black ones or whatever, but if you paint them to match, it's quite a nice touch. I just, when, I, when I'm, when I'm painting them, I just stick them into a, what's this, a hairpin to hold them. Then I can just stick that into a bit of foam. It's quite good, it's quite a, it means you don't get the build up around the hook shank of paint that you would otherwise. So, getting them well locked in, don't want them moving. And then, plenty of super glue in here, there's no harm, so get it on. Just make sure flies that bit, that bit tougher, that bit more durable. Then I'm tying in my weed guard. Obviously, if you don't want a weed guard, don't tie one in. But I'm in favour of them. Uh, if I do miss a fish, it's a fish that I would never get a take from anyway. So, and that's just a. Uh, Twenty pound hard nylon, and you notice I don't go all the way round the bend with it. I like it to have a bit more movement, and that can help uh, reduce. You know, it's, it stops you getting, still stops you catching the weeds, but it means it can, the weed guard can easily move out of the way when a fish bites. Whereas if you if you lash it away round, it's it's held much more rigidly. So the tail, I've got two colours of marabou, black and blue. Obviously again, olive and brown, or purple and black, or white and chartreuse, whatever you like. And I'm just sort of rolling them together. I don't use, I don't use woolly bugger marabou, I use the extra select stuff that the steelhead guys use, and I just take the fibres off as you would as if you were taking, you know, like, fibres off of a pheasant tail to tie a nymph or something like that. So when I'm reasonably happy with the the mix, I'll uh, take my marabou, see about just a hook and a quarter, hook and a half, and I'll just let it run around the shank. Two or three turns to secure it. Trim the waist, the length of the body. Oops. And just tidy that up. I mean, it doesn't need to be. Doesn't need to be beautiful. As long as it's locked down, nice and secure. Flash. I'm using this as uh, Sebai Sparkle here, in blue and black. Quite a nice range of colours. 
you can match them up to your your bass flies quite easily. <coughs> oh, excuse me. Just uh, see that then help it around a wee bit. So I'll just wear my threads up at the front. We'll just catch it here. Put sort of tight and slightly up so it it stays on the on the gap side of the hook, which will be the top of the fly. It's obviously got a fish hook point up. Body is just a dubbed body. Uh, two colours. I'm using this, uh, Spectra Flash Dubbing and Dark Peacock. It's a, sort of nice, it's got the blues and the, the sort of dark black, and, but we flashes a green and copper in there as well. Really nice dubbing. Dubs easily as well. And don't be shy with this because it's. I'm not because I'm not tying a rib. I'm going to run my thread through back down through the dubbing and put another layer of dubbing over. Um, it just makes it keeps the body a bit tighter and makes your fly a bit more durable. So I'm going to finish my my thread back here over it a couple of times. The thread will pull in, tighten it. And that means the stuff that's getting brushed with the Velcro is really only the top layer, um, which is all I want for this part of it. The next section is just SLF, black SLF. Could use any long fibre dubbing. Right. Build up plenty. Don't be shy with this at all. You can run your thread through. about loose and finish with your thread at the front Got to throw a half hitch on here just now. Just for security. And then I'm going to come in with my Velcro. Get a right good right good brush. And I'm brushing always like into the gap. That sort of gives you quite a nice, a nice body. I mean, that dubbing will move and breathe in the water, and you're not actually getting that much bulk. You know, it's it's nice. 
so at this stage I'll feed my nylon through just put it through the jaws of your vice make sure everything going forward sweep it back tie it in and make sure it's directly in line with the shank, tie back to the eye now it's quite difficult to trim this um, so what I like to do a heat bodkin till it's red hot and then I'll just come in and melt it away and that's it rock solid, get some thread wraps over it before it cools down and it sticks to the thread it's not going to slip or anything, you know, it's, it's very well secured legs is the last thing or are the last thing look at these um, hollow silicon legs that I like if you can't get them, just use you know whatever legs you want. Uh, you know, silly legs get a bit of spinner weight skirt, brown rubber, whatever whatever suits you, whatever you've got in your in your uh, at your bench at the time will do. You know, um, I'm not even that convinced that the colours super important as long as it's kind of dark, right? five legs and I'm going to cut them in half and I don't worry too much about having even ends I think it's actually better if they're not even then I'll come in and I want the, the long end of the legs just just longer than the body so that I can halfway into the tail or so Then I'll come in. Four or five turns is plenty. Make sure they're sort of equally distributed. Don't worry if they're sticking forward or whatever. Take a few wraps in front to sort of stand up the shorter ends and leave them there because they vibrate like anything. They're great. Um, and then I'll just come in. Did quite just quite finish it behind. Oops. Another one for security. And just put it tight. So pull the eye. Really tighten that down. Last thing, just sweep all these bits of dubbing, you can even slightly moisten your finger if you like, just get them so that there's sort of nothing substantial over the back, come in with your head cement, just flood that head area, um, if any goes on the legs you just stretch them and it, once it's dry and it comes off. And I just come along the back where the head cement. So sort of. don't be shy. Get you can sort of flood it. I'm not looking to make like a hard shell. I just just um, enough to let stick this stuff it's, as a wee solid mass. Just rub it with your finger, smooth it down, and that means. As that dries, that's going to keep all the fibres on top of the fly as it's going to fish. Um, you probably don't need to, but I like it. I like that effect. Uh, also, just for the sake of it, like, it'll sink a bit better. So, there it is. 
it's a fairly easy bass fly. I mean, bass flies are quite, quite simple. Generally, they're not that taxing. Um, unless you're taking deer hair bugs, they can be a challenge. But subsurface bass fly, certainly worth a place in your box if you fish for large mouth, small mouth spots, whatever. Even if you're fishing in Europe, you're fishing for perch, they'll delete this readily. So, uh, yeah, thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed that. I hope it was useful. Uh, don't forget to like and subscribe for more HD fly time videos. Thanks a lot, guys. Bye.